Hey space fans, this is Rod Pyle from This Week in Space. How can microbes on Mars make it as nice a place to live as the Hamptons? Well, we wanted to know, so we asked Dr. Erica De Benedictus, a pioneer in quick terraforming, to tell us about how this might take place. Stick around and find out. So, uh, Erica, I was looking at your LinkedIn, as you probably guessed in our earlier conversations, um, and uh, you kind of touched on this. You said you're a computational physicist. Um, so does that mean that somewhere you have a huge computational model for Mars involving like lots of uh, cloud resources and all of that kind of stuff? Or what, what's the plan there? Yeah, so one of actually the cool things about being part of the Astera Institute and the part of the incubator there um, is that we actually have physics collaborators who who literally study Mars climate. So so Astera is funded. It's a, a philanthropic science org funded by Jed McCaleb, who's also the founder of Vast, which is one of the, the private space oh. station companies. So Jed is like one of these people who like lives in the future, right? Like like for him, space travel really is happening and it's like urgent to like figure this stuff out. And so I'm not the only person at Astera that is thinking about Mars. So I have a collaborator, Edwin Kite, who um, is is more on the, the modeling side. So, so he's been working on climate models for Mars, um, especially to simulate what would happen if you heat a particular area of Mars, you know, where would the water vapor go, stuff like that. Um, so, so there is some of that. And it's it's an interesting challenge because we have it, it, it's a little bit beyond our current modeling capabilities um, because, you know, current current climate models for Mars make assumptions b based on facts about how it is today. And so you can't it's not always a simple matter of just adjusting temperature and see, seeing what happens. You have to simulate new effects. Um, so, yeah, some, some of that is happening, which is very cool. Very neat. So uh, we would be remiss if we didn't actually get into the the core of your paper, which was fascinating, by the way. And I don't read that many papers, so when I do, <laughs> I, I like to have one that's sort of engaging, and that definitely was. So you talk in there about not just terraforming Mars, which has been written about plenty, but usually on the scale of centuries to millennia. You talk about ways of going after this in decades which is, I think, the revolutionary part of this. So could you kind of walk us through how you would do it? Yeah, maybe maybe let me do it sort of back to front. So the potential target end state for a terraformed Mars that, again, this is all very early, but I, I can't find a physics reason why this isn't possible, let's say. The, the desired target end state is a Mars that's green, so it has a planetary-wide biosphere that's that's active, metabolically active. Um, it has a, a thin but breathable atmosphere that is almost entirely just oxygen. So it has to be thick enough that if you're a human and you go outside, you can breathe it and, and you won't die. Um, right. It won't be super comfortable, but it, it'll be like a, a hundred millibar. So about what like fighter pilots breathe. Um, and that amount of atmosphere would protect the surface from like most radiation. So it, it wouldn't be a problem that there's no magnetic field. Uh, backing up to how, how do you get there? Um, I think one of the main sort of insights is that, again, it, it used to be thought, and we've now debunked this idea, it used to be thought that you could just melt the ice cap and it's just not big enough. So where do you get the atmosphere from? That's like the fundamental question. And I, I think the thing that changed when sort of, you know, I and a, a bunch of other people gathered last year at a, a workshop kind of to figure this out, I think the, the new idea is to do it the way we did it on Earth. So taking you back some billions of years, um, Earth didn't used to be habitable either. Um, we didn't used to have very much oxygen in the atmosphere. And what changed was photosynthesis evolved. And photosynthesis, what it does is it takes water and it splits it into oxygen, which it throws away. And then it takes the hydrogens and stores them as sugars, right? And so the arrival of photosynthetic microbes on Earth is what literally split water and released the oxygen into the atmosphere. And so that's the idea is to basically take 
the actually quite plentiful water on Mars and use it to generate an atmosphere with photosynthesis. And again, walking one step back from that, to get enough photosynthesis going, you have to grow stuff. To grow stuff, you have to warm it up. And so you need, you need ways to create either structures um, that will be warm enough to, to allow for, for plant growth um, or other, other ways of warming things. Uh, again, Edwin, my collaborator, he works on basically like a type of glitter that reflects heat, like IR radiation specifically. So you could release it in an area and it would sort of make a little blanket to keep that area warm. Oh, and, and on this, this timeline thing, um, yeah, there's, there's, uh, I think it's again, very early to estimate, but, um, in principle, especially with some of these new warming techniques, like the glitter, um, combined with the fact that we are, we have like quite heavy launch vehicles for getting to Mars. If you do the math, um, you could warm Mars quite a lot to the, to the, to the state where it can grow stuff outside in a couple decades. So you could get to green Mars very fast. Um, it would then take longer to to give the lifetime to generate that atmosphere. But even before you have sort of like planet wide oxygen, if you dropped a dome down, the plants could fill just the dome in a year or two with it with enough atmosphere for you as a human to, to live in. So it's 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 terraforming. It's not it's it like requires that we like recognize that Mars will never quite be Earth. So it's like the, the endpoint is not identical, right? But but certainly something that is more amenable to life and much more amenable to human life. 